You're listening to the Surgeons of Horror podcast, The Ring Franchise. Welcome to the Surgeons of Horror podcast. Its purpose is to look into the horror films, dissecting them one screen, legend and franchise at a time. Our podcast subject for this episode is dedicated to the Ring franchise. In order to successfully do this, we need a team of horror aficionados who will form the surgical team each episode. So, first up is yours truly, Paul Farrell, lead surgeon and host for the series of this podcast. And joining me for this episode is Anthony Yee. We're not eating lunch. No, we're not eating lunch. Why would we do that? And alongside me to the left is Ben Skinner. Bon appetit. (laughs) I'm also not eating lunch. He no. doesn't know how to use a freaking And you love, you love throwing in the, la- <laughs> the uh, foreign language. I'm trying to cut around all the... The fat. Or yeah. The fat. We're having tandoori chicken. <laughs> Let's just review this. It's a pie. Tandoori good. chicken. Tandoori chicken. So we're here to talk about the Ring franchise. Ringu. The uh, Ringu would, yeah, indeed make up the, uh, the first of the original franchise. Um, and it came out in 1998. Um, directed by Hideo Nakato. And uh, look, it, I'm not. I'm, we we kind of will gloss around some of the, the sequels that spawned off these, but primarily I think focus on on Ringu. Um, but it did kind of at the, in the same year, a sequel was released as well called Raisin or or Spiral, mm-hmm. um, which kind of went a bit under the radar and people forgot about it. And then uh, the director of that film teamed up with Nakada to do Ring Two and Ring Zero: The Birthday. So Ring 2 effectively followed on. So they, reha- they got together, rehashed it, did a follow-on from Ringu. Mm-hmm. And then um, the uh, Ring Zero uh, is kind of what it says. It's a prequel to the, uh, to the original. Um, so and then like Ring double zero? Ring, no, ring, ring? zero. Because <laughs> Ring is a zero? Ring is a zero. Yeah. The circle is complete. Twice. <laughs> Twice. I'll say it again. Mm-hmm. The circle is complete. <laughs> the um, so that kind of um, rounds out the uh, I guess that kind of franchise. But also uh, more recently, about twenty thirteen, uh, there was um, a, a, a sequel of sorts to Raisin, but it was just called Sadako Three D, and then oh, Sadako Three yeah. D Two, which was released in like twenty fourteen. <clears throat> so does that somebody playing the game is this gets really bad Sudoku no Sudoku Sudoku dude <laughs> Sudoku oh my god I can, I'm the only one in this room and get away with that <laughs> you said it you're a racist uh, you they will make a Sudoku like a Sudoku film though eventually I, I, if there's an emoji movie coming out oh, you can imagine oh, yeah. a Sudoku and right. it will be about being stuck in a world trying to solve a puzzle yeah. um, the um, and then following those two, obviously there was uh, was it last year? There was the crossover with Sadako versus the Grudge Dude right. uh, Kayako, Kayako mm. um, which I watched recently too. Is that good? Um, well, well, I'm going to tell you a bit later on when we get to it. Okay. How about that? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> then um, and then the American franchise is the, that's uh, the what I came in. We're going to talk about as well. So um, uh, th- the first of those, 2002. Um, yeah, Naomi Watts yeah. starred in and was directed by Gore Verbinski, who most people know as the Pirates of the Caribbean dude. Um, I thought English people pronounce it Caribbean. What did I say? Caribbean. But I'm English. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the English pronunciation? Caribbean or Caribbe- Caribbean? I Caribbean's say, American. Car- I, what did I just say? You said Caribbean. You Caribbean. said the American way. Well, I'm f- I know Kermit the Frog says Caribbean. I, yeah, that's the American way. Well, I'm American then. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Caribbean, yeah, I normally would say Caribbean. No, yeah, um, or curry, or curry beans. <laughs> Pipe tape back. Yeah. There, see you. Oh, I did. Caribbean, Thanks. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so he's the guy that oversaw that. But interestingly, the sequel, the American sequel, mm-hmm. brought in Hideo Nakata again to direct it. Ah, um, but still Naomi Watts. Remember, but still Naomi Watts. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then um, just around the corner, like around mid Feb, is going to be the the third installment called Rings. Mm-hmm. Um, which obviously none of us oh have you been privy to see that yet or no not Looking quite no 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 I'll, no I'll look forward to seeing Ben that. sees movies before he sees any movies before anyone he sees movies before they're made it's come yeah mm-hmm. there is a screen coming up for that yeah um, cool so um, so that kind of wraps up well, obviously in a quick nutshell about um, how many of these films have gone into this kind of legend of Sudeiko um, 
how much of that are you guys privy to? What have you seen of those? I've seen the original <coughs> ring. Yep. Um, very closely to the American adaptation, so it was interesting to compare the two. Yep. Which one did you see first? I think I saw Naomi first. Okay. I think from memory. Yep. Um, and then I saw Wing 2, and I think that's it. And I've seen, the, obviously, the, the grudge. The grudge stuff, yeah, yeah but that's... God. <laughs> well, there was an American grudge, wasn't there? Was that, was yeah. Sam, Sam Michelle Gellar? Yeah, Sam Michelle Gellar, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, that's why yeah. so I'm you? the same. I, actually, no, I've, I've, I saw the Naomi Watts version first, and then quickly, oh, quickly, wow. quickly okay. thereafter, I saw I saw. That's interesting. Because um, it was on SBS or something, like, they were, they were like, yep. playing it just after. Mm -hmm. The film came out. Cool. Well, so, so I'm the only snob in the group then, having seen the original before the uh, the remake came did about. You, how did you hear about the original? I went to the cinema and watched it. Oh, right. Did you know what and, uh, I want to say, because on Soho, um, which is kind of like known for showing kind of a bit more um, independent kind of foreign mm. movies, and particularly so Soho as well, it's right by Chinatown as well, so it tended to have a lot of the Eastern uh, influence oh, okay. movies shown there. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw the eye there and dark water and uh, another that I can't think of. Mm -hmm. um, I went through a whole massive. I studied a little bit of Eastern cinema at university. Mm -hmm. um, but prior to that, I kind of was already kind of into that kind of culture. So straight off the bat, <clears throat> what back then, nineteen ninety eight, Paul? Yeah. What was the first thing that that? that captured your imagination about Japanese horror that did it differently to Western cinema? What I really love, right, is um, there's, they have the, well, in this instance, the Japanese influence of it, um, but it, you can kind of group it into Asian cinema as a whole. Mm. They have a great way of picking up um, old folk tales or ghost stories mm. and adding a new kind of twist element to it, which, and that was the bit that hadn't been done before or explored before. Mm of kind of looking at them in a new way. Mm. But even their their storytelling and pacing, I think, adds weight to it. One of the criticisms of the original Ring movie was that it's slow. Mm. and But they cut, for me, they missed the point because that's how the tension builds up yeah. throughout the movie. The classic thing of take out the scares, bring in the tension. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I'm a mass and I, you know me, I'm a massive fan of psychological horror anyway, and this does play on that kind of psychological element. And it's something that keeps tapping into for in the movie franchise universe mm -hmm. is the skeptics keep saying it's a psychological yeah. thing in your mind you believe that you are scared therefore it's this scared. thing is coming to haunt you yeah. not knowing that the thing is created is real is real yeah um but i like that kind of whole kind of concept of it within there so like yeah so for me like when i i just remember going to see this and kind of coming out and just going i've not seen anything like that for a long time mm. And I guess we were a bit kind of like, you have to go back to like the 70s where horror was at its height. And through the 80s, it went through obviously the whole kind of slasher period and, mm. you know, the camp, camp horror. Yeah, yeah. And then got a bit kind of mm. farcical. And then like, you know, it wasn't until Wes Craven's Scream came out that it poked fun at that. Yeah. But still made it scary. Um, <clears throat> that things started to kind of... So did you, did you see it. this before Blair Witch? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this did. is even before. I didn't like, see Blair. Footage. I didn't see Blair Witch, and it's funny you say that because they have a, both of them have a very similar yeah theme kind of undercurrent running through them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't. I didn't. I saw Blair Witch um, on video, not oh, not the cinema, movie, not yeah. the cinema. I yeah. saw the cinema. I actually saw recently, weirdly enough, the, the Blair the uh, Blair Witch, not the Blair Witch project. I saw the scene Blair Witch. Yeah, um, just the other day actually. Weird, but I missed out on the comment, that that discussion. That was another podcast. It yeah, was. well, we yeah. we talked about how important that film was, and like I think you could kind of it's it's interesting that this that the Ringu like predated predated that. It did, mm. and yet, and it's also uh, some kind of I can't remember where, where I was reading it, but like uh, like it was being voted like sixty one in the top one hundred horror movies of all time. Ringu. Um, so it kind of has, if we weigh that up, there's been a lot of horror movies. And that mm. kind is, of the, is The Ring in there as well? Or? Uh, I think The Ring is in there somewhere, yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, bit, that's lower than I thought it would be. But just, um, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of classics. Yeah, there are quite, <laughs> there are quite a lot. Yeah. As we so talked about. Like, yeah, so it's, um, 
Yeah, it'd be inter it's interesting. I still think that's, you say that's quite low, but I still think that's quite an important place for a, mm. for a modern horror film. Especially considering it's a foreign, foreign yeah. film. Yeah, like exactly. How many foreign films would there really be in there? Like, oh, be depends if it's, a, if it's an American poll versus <laughs> yeah. a British Yeah, that's true. Exactly. That's true. Yeah. That's it. I think it might, I, wanna, no, I, could, I don't want to be misquoted, but I, I want to say it was um, Empire. It was an Empire magazine. Yeah, they used list. to be with their world cinema. So, um, yeah. What were your thoughts, Ben, when you saw the two side by side? Well, I was yeah, because they were quite close together. Hmm. I actually, I actually think at the time I preferred the Naomi Watts one, but as time has gone on, I've kind of appreciated that the, the subtlety of the first one yeah. makes it a stronger film. Yeah. Yeah, I hey, think. Sorry, go on. No, no, no. I just remembered there was a real there was a real buzz around that the whole concept of the ring at the yeah. time. Yeah. In, in, in high school, it was like. Everyone was, it was like the it thing at the time. Well, so then when we heard it was a remake, we're like, huh, interesting. Like, well, it was aimed at your demographic too, because that was teenage girls telling each other campfire They want to be scared, they want to go to the movies and get scared. Yeah. And all the guys want to go because they want to like scare the shit out of the girls. <laughs> yeah. The girls crook, like, mm. eh, like um, <laughs> nestle into their uh, breasts. But as a concept, I thought. <laughs> Instead of sorry, hang on, sorry. I just, I just caught up with Nestle into their breasts. Their yeah, man breasts. I think we should be man breasts. Their man breasts. Let's just follow. All right, so uh, before we, look, we're about to kind of get uh, the way the conversation is going there, we're about to get into kind of remake conversation, whereas I want to just kind of go concentrate more on uh, the original film and quickly nut through the films that followed it. So, um,. All right, we'll talk about the remake. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a gun pointed at my head. The um, but like so, look for those. It's hard to think of people that haven't watched this movie. But for those that haven't, the concept of it. How do you explain the concept of it? Oh, oh that's what I was about to talk about. Talk about really interrupted. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, I think conceptually, because the both films say it's the same concept. So it's videotape. Yep. And seven days. Seven days. Yeah. Yeah. Which in the new film they cut down to two days. Yeah, Why? Right, because it's digital media. It's cardless. It's quicker. Yeah, although, <laughs> interestingly, Sudoku 3D, it's two Just, days. You say Sudoku every time you say that. It's it's like, I said Sudoku. No, that's what I'm saying. I hear, I'm hearing Sudoku. <laughs> oh, right. Every time I'm, I'm just cut to like numbers. What? And like, Jason Sudeikis. <laughs> but um, I, I, it's a brilliant concept because in terms of uh, to Ben's generation, because he was a high school kid when he saw it, mm. it's the classic campfire story. It's the classic, if you walk past this graveyard. Yep. On the date that somebody died, you'll hear their voice. So this has modernised it by using a modern, back then, modern piece of technology, the VHS yes. tape. See, was it, was it like that was that was ninety eight was the cusp of DVD. So even but, when this came out, it was still an but old. nothing. But it was still like I mean, in terms of everything, like you know, walking past a graveyard, graveyards have been out for centuries. You know, you don't invoke the name of Bloody Mary in the mirror. Yeah, mirrors have been around for centuries. But a videotape was like, oh, that's kind of, and it'd be not around enough that yeah, it's yeah. It, it could have a spirit involved into it now and then and the classic seven days you get a, you get a phone call and then seven days you're gonna die which is the heart of all chain, chain email letters we get which is yeah. if you don't pass us on you'll fucking have something bad happen to you in two days which I've always really resented that if you sent me an email that said that I can't I was thinking to do um, but yeah as a concept I'm like yeah cool and you know and it's very, and the, then you yeah it's a classic psychological thing where you just heighten that person's awareness yeah ratchet it up to 11 Anything that happens to him after that, they can relate back to that incident that we did this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it worked really, really well as an idea. And 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 by adding the time, I mean I know we were talking about seven days is now two days, but mm. like that whole time limit thing, deadline. They plan the word deadline a lot yeah, deliberately. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that heightens that tension because as we get closer, you know, we the audience is reminded every time it's a new day, the date is displayed on the screen. Yes. So you're, you're reminded of the countdown. It's a bit like It Follows, too. You, yeah. You've got, I was thinking yeah, that. Literally, yeah. I was thinking about It Follows mm. yesterday. And I was like, oh, there's a similar kind of in, uh, uh, theme running through that, too. Mm. It's this thing, mm. entity chasing yeah. you down. It's high concept, because yeah. the best horror films, they should be able to sum them up in, like, you know, mm. like a sentence or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. exactly what, you know. Exactly. And explaining this to friends, like, the premise or whatever. Yeah. Be like, oh, I don't want to see that movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's great. It's As, like, like, and like to kind of go back to what you were saying about the campfire kind of ghost stories, even the opening of this movie, which is repeated in the remake of the two girls talking about, the, it's almost like they yeah. are sitting around that campfire and obviously yes. it becomes real when yeah. uh, Sudeiko appears. Mm. Um, 
what was your uh, initial uh, reaction to Sudeiko as uh, as a ghost figure? I thought, well, the first death from memory you, uh, for the Naomi Watts version, the girl the girl screams. You don't see what she's the girl that's dead in the closet, but the yeah. other girl finds the body. Yes, but you don't see the body until later in the movie. And her and the actual, I mean, that was the big difference between the two. They had a budget, so they literally broke her jaw yeah. and make her skin really uh, sallow and there's veins yeah. popping out. In the Japanese version, they just told the girl to open her mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. And, and then freeze yeah, frame, black and white. Yeah, and and just close and, up yeah, shots. Slump yeah. over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, which was scary until you do. You do. This is one of the few occasions where spending money on the effect was actually better because it was quite. Oh my god! Mm, mm. Um, for memory, the girl when she finds the body in the closet, it's a quick zoom in on her face. Yeah. Is that right? And yeah. then for a frame, her scream, her face distorts. I could be making that up. But I remember it, as an yeah, effect. it's kind of more of a. It's more just like a, cl- a crash scene just crash where, where she screams. But as an effect, it was good because you didn't, because I think you don't see the face, so you just, yeah. you just freaked out because she's freaked out. Yeah, that's right. Um, I remember that was really good. When it got into the whole detail of who Samara is, that is the name of the girl in, in the remake, remake yeah. yeah, yeah, and the whole throwing down the wall and she's got long hair. I mean, physically, it's creepy. It's mm. really good. Like mm. she she crawls in a natural way. You can't see her face. Long hair, yeah. It's yeah. A, it's, she's a ghoul. It's a very sim. It's a very typical image of, of a Japanese ghoul. ghoul yeah. It's the white, dressed in white, yeah, long yeah. black hair kind of image. But it was yeah. really, for my memory. I mean, there might have been a few. I'm, I want to say I'm the bar bar. May have done it in the '60s, mm. black and white Asian film. Yeah. Right. But um, it was the first kind of like real modern film that took that image, and and obviously there were installments of that after the fact yeah. that's been used over and over and yes, over yeah. it's, it's made it, it it made it into pop culture like yeah. after that like yeah. western yeah. Pop that's culture. right it's kind of like an iconic image now too absolutely well the boy in the, in the grudge is basically that just he doesn't have long hair yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's right exactly. and they're also using it obviously to their advantage in the marketing campaign for this new rings film mm. by yes oh having yeah having people yeah, yeah. <laughs> come out of TVs in a heart you know uh like you know Harvey Norman or the yeah. equivalent yeah, of yeah. and scaring the shit out of people I just every time you do that you gotta have one person who's gonna fucking take something and throw that's kind of what scare campaigns about but, the, yeah, the yeah it goes out gets out of hand but it happened in that um, The Nun Conjuring 2 yeah <laughs> so there's, there's two three water bottles at their head <laughs> she goes ow <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's <so> great. Yeah. <laughs> it's always works well with horror films, isn't it? Yeah. It, um, was a, it was a water bottle filled with blessed water. Is that what it was? What the fuck? just really staying in character. I'm melting. It's a good marketing campaign for your bottle of water. And, you know, the yeah. biggest compliment of all, they, they took the piss out of this in the scary movie. I mean, that's just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you've made it. Yeah, yeah. You've made it into a scary yeah. movie. Yeah, come on. So yeah. So yeah. Okay. Cool. So like in in a nutshell, then the um, so the concept of the first film is that you follow the mother as she unearths the videotape. She watched watches it mm. and realizes there's a curse on it, and then uh, so she then shows it to her ex husband. And yeah, and he how, how come he dies first? No, he dies last. Yeah, no, he dies last, but he di- he dies. Yeah, because I thought they'd fixed it. They thought they fixed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they—that's—that's that's the reveal. Is that yeah. they, she kind of goes, well, what's different this time round? Yes. Why did he die, not me? And then she realizes that she made a she copy. made a copy and then showed it to him. So therefore, she passed it on. She passed it on. So it's like yeah. a virus. It's yeah. That's the it. Follows. She becomes a carrier rather than yeah. a victim. Or victim. <laughs> but then therein is the way the film ends. Is that her son has watched it so they need to try and make a copy make a copy get him to make a copy and they decide to kill the granddad at the end of that one that's that's how it ends oh. they drive into to the granddad oh they're going to show it to him to yeah. show it to him so yeah. that he basically like they so the boy lives and then the granddad will die right uh, the greater good. Oh, vaguely, yeah. Okay, I remember that. Now. That's kind of so. It ends with them driving to it, and there's a voiceover, and she goes, "I need you to do a favor for me. It's for my, it's for my son." Fuck you. So with the ringer, the so rings. Yeah. With everything now going viral, can you really fuck over the entire world by uploading it to Facebook or yeah. Twitter? Who knows? They might do it. That's nice. <laughs> nice. The um. So what? But what's what? I wanted to go back to on um on that was the role, the kind of the role of the husband. 
character within it um, because what they what isn't necessarily obvious in the first film but what they then go into in the sequels is that he um, has a gift himself okay this is where my knowledge is starting to get funny. yeah so I'm, I know that neither of you guys have watched so how, how faithful did both because usually the, 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 the remake is faithful to the first film but then they start splintering off to, in the sequels is that what happened here or they stay remake, uh well I, I don't I don't want to get to American Remake yet I just okay. want to talk about uh, sequels to the original okay so the Japanese yep. sequels yeah <laughs> it's, it's hard to follow it so like uh, so as I said like so um, the second film which was released the same year actually at the same time it's meant to come out as like a bit of a right. uh, double whammy movie mm -hmm. well, it was called Raisin not as in the toast <laughs> yeah not as in Raisin Toast um, R-A-S-E-N is how it's spelled but it was mm -hmm. also known as Spiral and it's actually based on the book Spiral which oh. is the, the sequel to the book that Ring's based on too. Okay. Um, and weirdly, I kind of liked it when I watched it because the, the concept of it is is that you find out that um, the husband has a, a gift of uh, foresight. Mm -hmm. And so he was kind of aware of things that are going on. And when you actually watch the first one, there's the moment where he first walks into the, uh, into the apartment and he stops as he's taking off his jacket and he kind of looks up. And it's almost like he's sensing right, so he knows something. Going on. So he knows, he picks up that there's an entity there. Ah, okay. And they play on that in this one, mm. even though he's dead. Um, because it picks up with an old school friend of his who's a doctor. Mm. And who finds out that, you know, he's died. Mm. Um, and he's, it's his job to do the autopsy report on it. Okay. And then he has a... Uh, almost like a vision of the the guy coming back to life while he's cutting him up. Nice, which that's is good. quite a nice moment. Set piece, yeah. Um, and he basically kind of forewarns him that you know there's this thing yeah, out okay. there. Right. Um, Do not watch this videotape. It massively deviates a little bit though because it kind of like you're following this journey and it's I don't know how well you remember but the uh, the husband had an assistant as well and it kind of follows her as well. Mm. Right. Um, and then you find out that the doctor lost his uh, wife and his son um, as well. And then, like, to cut a long story short, um, the doctor is uh, suicidal. That's how we see him when we first see him. Mm -hmm. And all he wants to do is die. Mm -hmm. But by the end of it, he chooses life because he's given the opportunity to have his son back. But in order to do it, he has to bring back. Sadako in a in the almost in the form of his ex wife because they use it as a ve her vessel to right. bring her back uh -huh. and also interestingly the husband comes back as well yeah um, it gets trippy <laughs> I tell you it gets trippy uh, but it all and but by doing that it just changes the pattern of events moving forward like there's a it spreads a disease out in the world people start dying through it through almost like a tuberculosis kind of disease. Oh, really? So people that haven't watched the movie, the, the videotapes who have come in contact with the, either people that watched it or ah. start mm -hmm. coughing up blood and then dying. So, like, it just kind of throws things a little bit. But, like, really weirdly, though, too, is that they uh, they kill off the, the original mum and son in a car accident, so they don't actually get to deliver the videotape to the granddad in this oh was that because Sudoku just fucked them over or just just bad luck it's just bad luck <laughs> See, so best, laid go, plans. So <laughs> best laid plans so they kind of deviate so what so when they then so as I said that movie kind of went unsung didn't really kind of go anywhere yeah then Ring 2 got made which was the original sequel rehashed Ring Ring a better, of a better word and they kind of in that instance that Follows a bit more of a similar story arc to the first one, the the remakes. Oh, sequel. remake sequel. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So there's, um, a, there's a mother back alive again. The mother's alive. Yeah. So, so they've ignored that. that they've mother. ignored that whole, uh, story, yeah. whole okay. concept. Okay. So in this one though, they um, it's uh, although she's only alive for a bit, because <laughs> okay. um, it does focus on the kid more though. Mm -hmm. Like that's hence like. The, the American remake does that too. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I remember, um, I remember that. And then the kids got this kind of hidden, uh, kind of 
spiritual power very similar to Sadako has. Mm. Um, and he's able to kind of control and manipulate things. And then they do like these psychic research on him using a swimming pool. And I say that with inflection because that reminded me of It Follows as well at the end where they're in a yeah. swimming pool. Oh, yeah, yeah. And well, I was, I was like, trying to trust I was it, like yeah. what is it about swimming pools that scares Stranger, Stranger Things. But, well, yeah, Stranger yeah, Things. The and and the, what is it about The vampire pools? thing with the kid? Oh, yeah, let, let it in. 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 I think it's um, right right to right do with that's, that's water. Yeah, water being rebirth and blah, blah, Yeah, well, that's kind of what it does. It's the whole kind of, it plays on that in a massive way. But, the mum gets killed off um, trying to rescue the son mm. and she runs out into traffic and gets hit and killed. Mm. And then the, the son's left and it's down to back to the assistant again of the, the husband yeah. who then takes on the mantle of heroin, I guess, mm. for the rest of the piece and saves him at the end. And there's a whole bit where they go in the water, face Sadako mm. and come out reborn yeah, right. and anew again. Um, so that's kind of what Ring 2 does and then Ring 0 uh, which was the prequel one basically is how Sudoku comes about but it's the whole kind of problem that we get with all these kind of births uh, like takes uh, away the menace of it yeah it does like because you're humanising the yeah. it's like we've right. seen it with the Jason movies oh no yep. the, and oh, yeah. the Michael Myers stuff um, kind of does a very similar thing and it tries to make out that she well, almost goes, has goes a split to a, personality that happens. Goes back to like a college years or something. Or? Yeah, yeah, that's right. She's in she's in theatre. She does this like oh, um, performance. <laughs> for no, real? It, 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 <laughs> is like, she a girl? Well, she's at school. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. College. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, she's at school when she starts discovering she's got that handsome she's got posters on a wall and stuff. Oh. <laughs> she keeps um bopping her way. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be handsome. Would it? It'd be <laughs> it's like, J Bop. Yeah. This is set in the sixties, so what? Beatles. Um, yeah. But yeah, so he's a, as she sorry um, has a bit has this kind of split personality, uh, mm. but it's the evil part of her personality that personifies and becomes the entity known as Sudeiko that we see, mm. um, and the other side is this good side of her, and it's this kind of mm. conflict between the two of them. No. We don't he's want to buy it. Not buying it. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> so um, well, can she just be a bitch? <laughs> that's exactly it. But um, yeah, so like, kind of at the mm. end of it is um, you know. Um, but isn't that in, in the American remake? Sorry, in the American remake, they 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 explore that pretty quickly in depth. Isn't it? It's about Samara, and she got thrown in the well from memory. Yeah, and it's all because she got thrown in a well, but she came out with a really bad attitude. Yeah, but this uh, yeah. So in this one though, she doesn't get thrown in the well until after it's all kind of happened. Right. Um, so it's yeah, as in like she, there's all the evil part of her is already. Manifested, but what I want to do touch on on Ring Zero, which I found interesting, which kind of may relate to the whole how as technology develops mm. and we move on, um, we're now seeing rings come out, and it's all going to be like a from the under, our understanding a viral kind of video video infection online. Mm. But what was interesting about Ring Zero is that um, it's through audio cassette tape where it starts manifesting itself, not videotape. So it develops through the... Different because technologies. as she's performing, they're playing it, they're, they're recording stuff, and then yeah. when they play it back, all of a sudden there's this weird kind of, you know the screechy kind of sound, yeah, it yeah. starts coming into effect, and it's almost like it's starting to form within... Oh. So what I thought about that was like, well, that's a, that isn't... That makes... Regard, I mean, none of us have seen the new movie, but it makes it a bit more believable knowing... She's just adapting to the new medium. Exactly, which is like, oh, that's actually quite good. Yeah. Seen how without a, without a, hopefully not without feeling gimmick, always, gimmicky. Exactly, yeah. 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 So we don't know. We don't know that yet. But I've always see. found that interesting with, with magical entities. Yeah. Whenever, uh, particularly things like, like uh, Blair Witch and, and uh, Grave Encounters. The yes. People come in armed. They've learned from the mistakes of the previous people and they've brought in newer technology, yet somehow this magic that's been around for centuries still supersedes this new technology. And I'm thinking, when is the cut-off point where magic goes, you know, I can't handle that. I can't beat that. That's too too advanced. I can't do downloads. Because so magic's got to have an upgrade too, don't they? They're incompatible tech. I've built an Android to do with my up, the upgrades that I can't handle I know. anymore. I know, that's why... Let like, artificial, artificial intelligence take over. Because I just looked at... Sorry, bring it back to Blue Witch, because that's the only thing I've seen recently. But the thing is, obviously, the Blue Witch somehow fucked the original kids with their 1996 film technology and whatever, and yeah. GPS. And the new kids come in with a drone, yes. and the Blue Witch can still handle a drone. Like, 
Well, no, Dryad's back in the... I think they get the access to the beta before the... <laughs> the, 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 the <laughs> can, the, can their release. magic still handle our stuff? But yeah, it's fine. They're on the beta list. But if it's it's witchcraft in that instance... But, come on! What? You know that kid when you're a kid, right? Yeah. And you're Superman. Yeah. And then your little brother goes, I'm a witch and I got magic and magic supersedes Superman. And therefore you, he kept on beating you, which, you know, and then you go... Fuck you, you little shit, and then you hit him in the head. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm saying. That. That's what exactly it feels that's like. That's what, that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. It so feels like... Just, why? Like, every time you fight su- su- like So we're not dealing with... Su- we're not dealing... Like, the whole point of these is, like, it's not... We don't have Superman going up against a Daco. <laughs> 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 that's a Daco. Awesome. Like, Best conversation ever. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't... But we're not... We're dealing, just, we're dealing with... You guys are crossing... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Crossing oh, no, like no, no. these. But I'm just saying... I was a Sony exec, right? Yes. And I've got a new technology that's going to fucking beat Samara once and for all. And Samara goes, not magic, ha ha. As the Sony says tech, that doesn't happen. Though, as a like. Sony guy, I'd be like, oh, come on. Yeah. Now, our magic I don't know, I don't know how Superman <laughs> came into this. But, <laughs> but like, let's just say, Samara goes, I predict that you'll have holograms and androids. You couldn't have predicted that. You couldn't have predicted the internet. And Samara goes, yeah, I did. Ha ha. It's not about predicting, though. <laughs> Just adapt. Just adapt. At some point, she can't adapt to everything. Why not? (laughs) Because you can't use the word because it's magic. Because she's but she's she's but she's a she uses a uh, the virus and a virus can eat and work its way into anything. Essentially, you're not the only way you're going to supersede stuff like that is by having an antidote (laughs) to it. But nobody's going to be able to predict that they need an antidote when they make these things. Everything crashes, man. Have you not seen Terminator? That's what I'm saying. Virus, (laughs) virus can be beaten too. They've got to invent something. I don't know. But they may, they may well do. Maybe Rings does that. Kills it once and for all. What? Well, like, I feel like I need to um, just uh, before we talk about the American remakes, mm. is quickly talk about the Sudeiko 3D one and two okay. movies. Only to say I watched them back to back, and it just felt like one massive long trip. <laughs> Didn't really understand what was going on. Yeah. Um, the effects were cheesy as hell and just kind of felt a little bit crap. Okay. And I'm really sorry to say that to the people that made that. Um, and it felt like it just had gone way away from yeah, what was. Sudeiko was. And I realised that as I was watching these movies, like the essence of what, you know, if we go back to Ringu, what these movies were about, they kind of missed that. Which... To, so basically, I'm bypassing those two movies. Yeah, really you think, I think most of the internet's with you on that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so it's got just a, a rating of 3.8 on IMDb. So <laughs> there you go. I don't think you're offending anyone. That's the, a, that's uh, been a little while since it's in a rating that low. But the fact that they had two in quick succession, like one after each other, one they probably like, did them both. Well, probably did. There's the same actors that are in it. You know. Mm-hmm. But um, but but this is where I come to with the crossover movie that came, that came out last year with the Sadeko versus Kayako. Mm. I've got to take my hats off. I kind of like think it's a pretty pretty solid movie. Um, I ended up liking it. It's not brilliant. Don't get me wrong. Mm. But I, by the end of it, and I can't tell you the end of it because it's a massive spoiler. Oh, okay. But I really like the ending of this movie. It's a really do they does the little boy fight the the girl with the long hair. Is it literally a versus? It's not just the little boy though. Like Kay- Kayako is actually the girl, the woman. It's the woman. Ah, oh, the one that got. Yeah. The boy is kind of like the almost like the messenger that comes before. Yeah. Kayako right, comes along. Know your law. <laughs> I, I, I remember it was a boy, and he's like got white. Yeah, yeah, on, that's and the he opens his mouth and he hears this. Like a cat. Yeah, the cat. Yeah, that yeah. all happens. Yeah. They, they kind play of have on that similar too. like little. Have you seen the new Ash vs Evil Dead? Mm. The new season, yeah. yeah. The little, season. the little children that Lucy uh, Lawless kind of spawns. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I was reminded of uh, um, <laughs> character. Have you, have you, you haven't seen the news? The yeah, yeah, it's the great. Echo one, or oh, so you're talking about? Oh, yeah, Ashford's Evil Dead. I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen the. Yeah. No, yeah. Look, I, I kind of recommend watching it. I, yeah, it I'm is curious like, now. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah. like basically the concept of it is is obviously they're both curses. One there's a there's one woman that a girl that gets the curse of Sadako and the one that gets the curse of of Kayako. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there's this other character that's in it who's a bit of a kind of it's almost like a big team up kind of of trying to defeat <laughs> these things. They come up with the idea of getting the girl that's cursed by um, one one to fight the other to watch the videotape. Oh, all right. So that basically they will get the two entities fighting over. The, the one soul, <laughs> and that's why they match yeah. up. But that doesn't happen until a fair way into it. Mm. Um, 
It's like finding a virus with another virus. It's exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. And what normally happens, like, I'm not going to say you in, but what normally happens when you try and do a fight a virus for a virus? Mm. I'll leave that open ended. Yeah. Um, but I do recommend watch it. Like, as far as, like, you could almost go, right, let's scrap. So <laughs> let's is scrap it, a whole is, load is of Is it them better than Freddy vs. Jason? It's, it's, it's heaps better than Freddy vs. Right. Jason. Oh. Well, there you go. That wouldn't be hard. Freddy vs. Jason, <laughs> like, to rely too much on the comedy element. Yeah. Before that movie, it like I watched it semi recently, and I, yeah. re- I didn't remember it being that what bad when Alien I first watched it. Ha, he was better than Alien versus Predator. I don't think like when's the last great crossover happened? Like yeah. when do you remember like a, a decent crossover? Hey, Batman vs Superman, all right? <laughs> that's not crossover, same universe. It'll be Avengers vs Justice League. Uh, yeah, that's never gonna happen. Yeah, no. Iron Man vs Batman. Yeah. Teen Titans vs X Men. Which was an actual comic I read once. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. Um, what is it? Yeah, what was the last crossover? <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> Jessica Fletcher meets Megan P.I. There you go. Or Tash. <laughs> the Tash. A lot of people died. They Justin Trudeau versus <laughs> Trump. Ooh. It's happening now, people. It's real. I tell you, yeah. it's real. Um, so look, it. yeah, look, that kind of uh, wraps up all that kind of the Asian kind of uh, mm-hmm. movies or, of the franchise. Um, and I guess as we go into talking about the remake um, with Naomi Watts, um, you guys, I know, watched that, as you said, at the head before the uh, the original Japanese version. But my question to you was, like, the, the big kind of scare moment in the original was where uh, the husband's sitting down at the end. So yeah, where we, the chair. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he looks, and then we see Sadako crawl out of the TV. Mm. And I remember when I first watched the remake being absolutely pissed off and livid about the way they handled it because I, what I loved about the original is that it's static and then you yeah. kind of see her slowly come forward and then she physically crawls out the TV mm. so define the breaking through the fourth wall kind of concept mm. where you're like well fuck and that was a scary moment where my memory of the remake was that they they had it and she's coming through but then all of a sudden they go to the side of the TV yeah. and she's and I was and I was just like oh fuck <laughs> uh, really being walks out of the yeah, yeah, like, that's it. it we all know that guy yeah <laughs> and then um, but when I watched it recently I went it's not actually that bad <laughs> <laughs> why was I so upset I actually thought it was really good. That was so so <laughs> like Paul standing up in the cinema. You fucked up. You fucked up. You fucked up. Dear Mr. Vibeski, I do it all. Uh, yeah, I may have done I it. I may have been ruined. Sorry to ruin your career. But uh, from, yeah, yeah, I remember that was okay because that was the first time I saw it. What, is, there, is it in the sequel that the television falls over and the hand comes out from underneath the TV? Or was that in that movie? I seem to recall that as an image. Man, I so watched it recently as well. Was it in a, uh, It falls over flat. It's flat screen too. Yeah, and that was the difference between. The, I think it was the first one, isn't it? But yeah, and water, on come, and water one. comes out. Yes, and then the hand comes out. And yeah, 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 yeah. Which so is not, not a bad effect. I think that's the yeah. first one yeah. again. Yeah, mm. um, yeah. No, it was good. I know there were elements of it. Like when I watched it, like what I really what struck me again watching it the, more recently uh, with the Naomi Watts' character of how much of a bitch she is. Is she? And you really don't warm to her as a person. Mm. And I found it hard to empathise with her by the end of it. Mm. I'm like, yeah, you brought it on yourself a little bit. Even her relationship with the husband isn't that believable. The ex-husband, I felt. They're both Aussie actors, weren't they? They're both immature. Yeah, he's and they own that. That's yeah. part of what yeah. the character's supposed to be. Mm. But I just found their relationship not believable. Okay. Uh, when I compare it to the original. Mm. There's definitely history that's not seen on screen that's evident in the characters that are portrayed by, by the Asian oh, okay. um, actors mm. and I didn't get that in this one I, I think it's way more stylish like it, it's you watch this one because it's it's all the production values and yeah and and I and I commend that I actually yeah. do I think that actually works in its favour and the, the yeah. style works too but really like I know and I'm jumping ahead again to Ring 2 mm that follows it because Hideo Nakado comes back and I actually prefer the style to that than I do with Bert Verbinski's one I found like it's gravitating more towards what the original concept was about yeah. and tone yeah. um, but that's not to deviate completely away from what Verbinski does because I think interestingly he adapts that story and owns it in his own right mm, yeah. and you can tell it's an well you can tell it's an American mm. um, upscale more budget version um, 
but yeah, like I, I found I found the movie like enjoyable as a whole. And the interesting changes in that is that in the original, it's the doctor that's looking after Sadako that kills her, and knocks her over the head, shoves her in the wall. Not the mum. Not the mum. Right. In the in the um, remakes, it's the mum. Yeah, that does mom. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they kind of follow the uh, in the in Ring Two. They follow that journey, that story journey further. Mm. Um, to kind of say that it was almost a, a, a voice speaking to her to tell her to do it because of the e evilness that surrounded Sadako. Samara. Samara, yeah. I don't. I, to me, Why she's not Samara. <laughs> like that was the one thing with the name change. Why yeah. though? Samara. Why do they need to? I don't know. It was Make a bit it sound crap. less 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 Eastern. Eastern, Eastern exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's Americanizing it, but I just found like Samara is a shit name. Sadako kind of feels a bit vengeful. Because it's got the K in it. Sounds like a crossword. But it's got, because it's got the, <laughs> the angle. Yes, it's yeah. like a crossword. Let's <laughs> <laughs> But it's, but it's, it's, the, it's the K element in it. Like mm. it's, it's using um, a consonant that's got a kick to it. <laughs> um, whereas Samara is, is more flowy. It's, it's more, hi, I'm Samara. <laughs> <laughs> hi, nice to meet you. How are you? How are you doing today? <laughs> Element to it. Whereas it's, I am Sadako. I'm fucking pissed off. There's a difference. You changed the fucking ending. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> but, but to get what I mean, I just found like that was a one element I found a bit. I'm being picky. I know I'm being really picky. I, I hold my hand up to say that. Um, because I do, like, I have to stress, I do enjoy watching the remake. Mm -hmm. But there's elements of it that just didn't... I really enjoy, I think, focus it on the mum, though, I think, was, again, to its strength. Mm. And I liked that as a storyline. Like, well, because big, because well, it's it's mirror, the mirror image of it, you know, yeah, like, yeah. she's now, she's walking that same yeah. uh, tightrope. With her know, son. With her son, yeah. yeah. And I think that explored the their, the, the uh, universe and the yeah. in a bigger way it's like you know, we all know history repeats and it's mm. that whole cyclical fa fashion and hence the name ring as well with the ah. I found all that kind of stuff I, I'm a sucker for all that kind of shit so yeah. um, I really enjoyed that element to it um, what about you guys well, I mean, you, what was your initial taking from all I remember was that the there was a strain actor in the first film for the boyfriend and another strain actor. Simon Baker was the second one, wasn't it? Simon Baker, yeah. yeah. So it was like, did they just make a concert effort to hire strain actors? Maybe. Only? And Naomi obviously was a strain. Uh, Dave, Davy Chase, was he the. It was, it was from Neighbour, the first father, the ex husband was from Neighbour. Oh, no, Martin Henderson. Yeah. I always wanted yeah, yeah, Henderson. Yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah. He hasn't quite, he never quite, he, he made it, but he didn't, yeah, he didn't quite make, make it. it. Not like Naomi did. It's probably because he's not that good in it. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Like, I really felt like he was a weak component of mm. the original uh, remake. Yeah, I have to, to read really <laughs> um, Whereas I found Simon Baker, for example, in the, in the sequel, added a bit more gravitas. Mm. I, he's playing the whole kind of. Consoling, um, I guess, patriarchal figure yeah. within it, but completely missing the boat yeah, well, and not understanding the concept. And yeah. I remember he's like talking about great special effects. The moment where he dies and she discovers it, him mm. when she op when opens the door and his whole face is massively distorted. Mm. Really like that. I thought that was yeah. a kind of a real, uh, it's a good cool shot. image. It's, it's a good great stuff. shot. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I don't know. A little boy, blue. Yeah, he did. I remember he, he when there's a bit in the second one where he's eating because he's possessed by Samara's spirit or something. Yeah, and he's eating a sandwich, and um, he's just eating a sandwich. And I remember the audience in the movie laughing because this is a ridiculous chipmunk going <laughs> <laughs> eating a sandwich. So uh, he also did Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the really little boy remake, the little boy. Oh, really? Did he? Well, I oh, actually right. can't remember him in that. Yeah, film. No, I, I can't remember, remember that, that at all. Yeah. Um, What's the kid's name? Uh, David Dor Dorfman. Oh, I know. I feel, that name I feel like bro. I'm not sure whether he's got because yeah, obviously some child actors kind of do their thing and then they just kind of yeah. decide it's not for them. Yeah. So they kind of become disappear. technicians or something. Um, That's all yeah. I remember from the second film movie was the kid being possessed. Yeah, like, he comes back. They they win. The good guys win in that one, don't they? I can't remember how. Yeah, kind of. And that was even a bit of a to me that felt like a bit of a well, we want to tie this up in a nice little bow at the end. Because effectively, like, she drowns him in a bathtub at the end. Right. To release Sadako's spirit. Because mm -hmm. it's the only way that she has to let go of or not possess him anymore mm. by drowning him. 
um, in the pool and like that ten in the pool in the tub, and that effectively should kill him, but he's somehow alive at the end. And then she gives up her own self to Sadako through right. the TV, and right. they have a big kind of battle. And then she decides to not go through it because oh. she's going to offer herself as a mum figure, yeah, right. and then decides not to, and then climbs out the well. There's a big thing, and she closes the lid on the well. Oh yeah, that's how it ends. She ends yeah. up in the well from the TV. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way of travel. So, um, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Ending to that. Mm. Um, I, I had a massive. Sorry, I, I know I did a bit, a bit of a mind blank in the middle of that because I just remembered something else that I liked about the Sadako v Kayoko one is that they actually go to an exorcist to try and exorcise the girl that's got Sadako's spirit within her, mm-hmm. and it goes massively wrong. And it's kind of nice. Um, <laughs> But I kind of thought that was Love kind of, kind of a <laughs> But it's kind of I like the idea of trying to go to somebody who's a supposed expert, but the entity is too powerful for them to. I mean, it's done before, but they yeah. do it in a way that mm. they kind of go right now. What the fuck do we do? And they kind of yeah, <laughs> like, like a lot package. of people get <laughs> killed off in that one scene without giving too much away. So are you like are you screaming out for this Rings film? Like, do you think the time's right, or do you think? Well, how long ago was... So Ring 2 was, what, 2005? Wow, wow we're talking yeah. about nearly oh, over 10, it's over 10 years. But the Sudoku versus... Obviously, we're talking about... Yeah, in, in Hollywood. It's been a long time since... Yeah, the in Hollywood. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But in a way, like, it depends what they do. Like, So I don't know... I'm not so sure if they're picking it up from... Is it a sequel or is it going to be a prequel? Because, you know, if I get the feeling it's going to be a sequel. Yeah. I've, from I've, what I've read about probably, it probably and it could just as likely be a, just pretending like the, the other films didn't happen as well yeah. as in like a reboot kind yeah. of idea kind of, or the tendency, because they're the tendency going has been whole... a sequel slash reboot even though okay. even if it is a sequel it's still going to be a reboot because mm. it's well, this is the thing. Like, so if you read the, I think if you read the synopsis yep. that's written up there, which I'll read to everyone now. So it's set thirteen years after the events of the first chapters of the horror fr- franchise, yep. which is so it's correct. The same universe. Um, Julia becomes worried about her boyfriend Holt when he explores the dark urban legend of a mysterious videotape said to kill the watcher seven days after viewing. She sacrifices herself to save her boyfriend, and in doing so, makes a horrifying discovery. There is a video within the video that no one has ever seen before. Oh. So in the video, somebody's watching TV on VCR. I said, play that one. Click. <laughs> Which you can now, if it's online. Hey, just watch that highlight. video that, yeah. of that person watching the video. It's an Easter egg. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is kind of what I think it's alluding uh, to. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, look, Am I so? What going back to your question? What did you say? Am I excited? Are you, excited? Do you, are you convinced? Are you, from what you've seen so far, do you think like we need, the world needs it? Or another. does the world need another Sudeiko? I kind of like. I'm I'm intrigued about moving it into an in, into a new medium. Yeah. Um, and exploring that that to me is kind of fascinating. I just worry. I I never put my hopes up too high because mm. I worry about how. Um, it can come across gimmicky, mm-hmm. and also like we've seen other installments where they've tried to re- reboot, and it just doesn't hit the mark, you know. And and having watched through all these other movies that we've just been talking about, how a lot of them did miss that original kind of yeah. zen that was in. The, I get the feeling the they're running out of <laughs> horror films to remake from the eighties <laughs> and nineties, so now they're going back <laughs> to yeah, yeah, ones yeah. from ten years ago. The so, second. but yeah, I mean, this is a I miss mean, the case, but like you know. It's it's an ongoing argument, isn't it? Like about not touching originals, and you know, you, you explore it to death. And Hollywood is, hasn't got any originality left to them. Like, but then, like, in their defence, and I do tend to lean towards loving the originals, right? So, mm-hmm. but in their defence, they are like they are dealing with new generations. You need to speak to those gen- new generations, and why not explore stuff that sc- spooked the hell out. of yeah. Then when they were younger, by exploring those stories again, right, or trying to find new ways of doing it. Now, somebody, I'm pretty sure is I'm going to name drop, but I'm pretty sure it was Enzo Tedeschi that I had a conversation with, or or or, or online. So he's executive producer of the tunnel, mm. um, and the Event Zero, coming. and Event Zero, which is coming. So keep keep your ears and eyes open, <laughs> or, or something like that. But he mm. did say to me about I, or as I said, I think it was an online chat, but I think he did say something about. Well, how do you, for those that are the naysayers against remakes, right? So, how do you then explain 
something like Shakespeare with a new adaptation of a, of a classic play being redone over and over and over mm. for a modern audience. Yeah. Good point. All you're doing is using the same storyline, but you're just getting somebody new to tell that story again, which to me, like, I've got no argument against mm-hmm. that. I can't counter-argue that. I go, yeah, that's a valid point. Mm. So, you know, there it's are new it. generations that will come across these stories that, yeah. you know, even like talking about this franchise, neither of you guys had watched the original when it first came out. You've come in and you've watched the remake. So yeah. therefore, what's the difference with the discovering... Or, or new generations coming in. Yeah, and it's because I and I didn't even know that it's like the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I think I knew that when I saw The Departed. I think mm. I I knew that what, what's the what's the um, files or something? No, internal. Uh, internal files. Yeah, I, I think I knew that that existed. Yeah, but I still went and saw The Departed anyway. I was a and massive then, snob against The Departed because you'd seen. I'd seen the original. I think it's so much better, way way better. Combines it combines the it's not, well, yeah, films, it's, not the, it? yeah, it's not the one film that's combined. No, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I, I have this thing like my wife will laugh at me kind of saying this, but I have this thing about how, and I know I know I'm in the minority of this, but I have this thing about how I don't think when Leonardo DiCaprio teams up with Martin Scorsese, I don't think any of those films work. His characters are not believable, and I don't, I just don't get into them. Whereas when Leonardo DiCaprio works for anyone other than Martin Scorsese, <laughs> are you hearing this? <laughs> oh, look, I, I don't. I've said it to you. Uh, yeah, you said to me. I, I have no opinion one way or the other. I'm like, yeah, fair enough. I just don't. Mm-hmm. I just don't get it. I just don't buy him in it. I don't think he's believable. I you think. Don't like um, the Crazy Island movie. What's it called? Shutter Island. Island. <laughs> Actually, I'll, I'll the look. Crazy <laughs> Island. <laughs> <laughs> the Crazy Island. That's the movie. Japanese working title. Working title. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy Island. <laughs> yeah. We'll come up with something else on the. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, look, of, of all of them, that's probably the one I like the best. But I, it, I found it a bit predictable. That was him yeah. doing Cape Fear with his new muse. Like he did. Yeah, well, Cape that's Fear right. With De Niro, and then he's like, "Oh, we need to do like a Cape Fear for us, like for me and you, Leo." And then made Shadow Island. But yeah, yeah. I, the only one I don't like is the Aviator. Oh, the Aviator sucks ass. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, and Leo's shit in Gangs of New York as well. Yeah, his Gangs accent, of New that's a he's, funny, like, that's my point. His accent's not, terrible. He's, <laughs> um, he's shit in all of Scorsese films, I'm telling you. He's not good in Not all that's of the them. Sound yeah, like. I'm totally out there. Yeah, not as good as De Niro is with, with Scorsese, obviously. De Niro, but that's, yeah, but that's the kind of magic that worked, and that's the Dead thing worked, I yeah. felt like Scorsese was, maybe he was just trying too hard to rekindle that, and I just find it's just, uh, the uh, DiCaprio's uh, characters just don't stick because of it. They don't, and I'm not. This isn't. I'm, I'm talking about a guy who I actually thinks a bloody good actor. Yeah. This is the thing. Like I've seen him in other movies, and he's way more believable than he is in all the Scorsese things. But there you go. That's just my opinion. So and I've already. I did preface that I know I'm in the minority with that opinion. It's like yeah. me and the fucking Heath Ledger and Batman. Yeah, man. I'm not a fan of that film. Yeah. And I'm in the minority for that one. Well, you, film, you, you may need to repeat you know that because you were yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, 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 no. You know, you know, we've had this discussion before. Uh, about? The, the the Batman Dark, Dark Knight sucks balls. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So you've had this discussion before. So what? So what's the film for you? What's the what is the film for you that makes the rest of us go, "What the fuck are you talking about, Ben?" Go. I don't think an actor directed combo. That's I don't know. Klaus Kinski and. Um, <laughs> and um, Werner Herzog maybe yeah yeah maybe don't see what the what, the don't they hate each other like why yeah. do they work together um, pull a gun on him for Christ's sake yeah yeah shocking <coughs> anyway we'll, we'll, we'll back on track about. here so uh, in, yeah, in look, conclusion in conclusion yeah I probably we probably should kind of wrap this thing up so I think um, we were talking about anticipation for the new rings and expectations of that kind of. So, what? Do you, uh, just to wrap up, I've given my my views. Just to kind of wrap up. What do you What do you think? Uh, I reckon I. I'm really talking about them again. I remember how like good the premise actually is. Yeah. I hope they can keep them like the menace and mystique about the villain intact for this yeah. new one. I think that's the key. I think that yeah. they what was missing about the Japanese sequels is that they suddenly just lost who Sudeiko was about and it wasn't yeah. menacing to me anymore and it kind of went into a bit trippy fantasy world yeah um, it's a less is more approach that yeah, they need to keep absolutely for sure yeah and um, I do want to I want to go back and watch some of the um, the sequels now hmm. I actually do recommend watching Raisin like it's a bit of yeah. a slog but I think it's it's it doesn't deserve the panning out that mm. it got yeah Whereas, like the other ones, they're all a bit of a trip fest, to be honest. The Ring vs. Grudge sounds like a, a 
I'm going to check that out. Yeah, you, I recommend watching it. I think it's good fun. I kind of I liked it, and it kind of keeps true to, in my opinion, it keeps true to the the ring and yeah. grudge movies. Did um, you find so. in, did the reactions of the Japanese people in the Japanese adaptations a little different to Westerners when it comes to seeing a ghost? Did you find audiences? It? You uh, and the characters, the, the way they read that, like when it, like when it, for me. And I read this. I may have been coloured by a review saying that that some some Japanese horror films, when somebody says you're yeah, a psychic, that, that they take it and, and face value. You say, yeah, okay, he's a psychic. Yeah. Whereas in the Western in the Western world, of, if I say Paul's a psychic, you're gonna go, okay. Yeah, there uh, is that. So there's, there's a, a different yeah. viewpoint, isn't it? Yeah, there are different attitudes, and that in turn affects their reactions when the ghost rises up in front of a certain character. Sometimes during the Japanese adaptations, yeah, they don't freak out in the same way a Western person would, who would say, oh my god, that's a fucking ghost, and they lose their shit. Did you find that with some of the reactions of some of the people? Not that they didn't freak out, but they didn't freak out quite the same way. Man, you realised that we were about to wrap up the podcast. I know. And you just had to have a conversation that's <laughs> probably a bit too big to answer right now. I, I'll try and sum it, up. sum it up in a sentence or two. Yes. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, there is a vast difference, but you kind of already kind of mentioned that in mm. your explanation of what you were trying to convey. Mm. Um but there is there's a different there's a different concept of the way Japanese or Asian people look at the afterlife as opposed to Westernized mm. civilization. Um, it's uh, there's a lot more respect towards the dead yeah. in Asian culture mm. or Eastern culture, mm. um, which I think is is kind of a nice thing. I think I kind of I I like that side of things. I think. And it makes it more, and that's why it makes it more fearful when you cro- when you mess with the dead, mm. or inadvertently mess with the dead, mm. and the spirits. If they're vengeful, they're going to be vengeful for a fucking reason. Mm. Where in an Eastern culture, it kind of doesn't have that same effect. I don't think. Yeah, I just yeah. But there you go. Damn. Cool. So last kind of thoughts um, <laughs> on the franchise as a whole. Um, uh, how what was your um, what is your feeling across the Ring franchise? I thought it was a great idea. I thought yeah. the campfire, the classic Bloody Mary, classic walking yep. across the graveyard, just with a modern twist. Yes. And why not? And it worked. Um, obviously, the sequels go on. The whole backstory about Samara, yeah, okay, whatever. Because, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's like, it is a bit like what you're talking about. Once you once you humanize the, the yeah. ghost, you do kind of want to know what the hell's going on, but once you do it, it kind of, it's a classic thing. But I think all yeah. you need yeah. to the know is that there's with some it. kind of. Uh, telekinesis kind of psychic kind of Carrie-esque yeah, thing going yeah. on with her and you don't need to really explore much no, more yeah. than that to know that yeah it's she's de- yeah exactly funny, you just reminded me like so. for all the f- as freaky as the TV noise is yeah like and the television itself mm. I think the phone like when after we saw this film we were just pranking each other constantly <laughs> oh, like, like, breathe, <laughs> oh brilliant like breathing heavily <laughs> just whispering <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. seven days <laughs> like just constantly so yeah, that was the, we did which that is too. tough to do now because a nobody has a landline. B if you ring up a phone <laughs> yeah. and it's a private it. line, nobody answers it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so that you don't kill people. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was always it was always. That's how Sony fucks are over. It was always <laughs> awkward when the, the parent would answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to like, <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Smith, is your son there? Yeah. Seven days. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Smith. Seven days. <laughs> <laughs> you pass on a message. Okay. Seven days. <laughs> Um, okay, let me buy. <laughs> That's really funny. You pranked each other. Love yeah. it. Cool. Oh, All right. Well, look. Good. I think. I think. Uh, I think that. Uh, unless is there something? No. Something no I think that's I'm, it. Over there. I'm gonna go ring someone now. Yeah. 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 Ring someone. <laughs> just someone okay. I have no problem with uh, this new film. I'll see it. Yeah, I think yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. want to go see yeah. it too. I'm, I like the look of it. I think the thing about great. remakes, whatever reboots, I'm cute. Somebody's been tasked with this job. They don't yeah. go. Let's do this. There's some go- some studio's gone. Mr. Skinner, you want the first feature film with us? You're going to do a remake of Star Wars. You're not going to go, fuck you. You're going to go, I'm going to think about it, thank you, and you go away. Well, I think J.J. Abrams did say <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. But um, the thing is, you've been tasked with it, and I want to see what yeah. you do with it. And, it's a hell, and you'll get some things right, you'll get some things well, it's wrong. Well, if, it, if it's yeah. your big break, if it's yeah. like, if I get fucking get this right, I've got to, you know, yeah. the guy that did the Evil Dead remake, yeah. you know, now he's oh. gone off and other things. Exactly. But. So whether you think principally you should have it, no, I'm curious. I'm curious yeah, to see exactly. what decisions this dude makes. They don't want to fuck it up. No, no they, they don't. don't. They, they don't. don't. Exactly. Yeah. It's, just... it's like the classic, the, 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 again, back to the Blue Witch, the Blue Witch sequel, the guy who did that, Adam and God. He got fucked over with the cut and everybody yelled at him and that's why he went to the, the Metallica docker because he wanted to get out of Hollywood. Oh, right. But that final cut wasn't him. They said that was nowhere near what I wanted. 
one of these. I forms. never knew that. It'd be interesting to see yeah, what yeah. his vision was then. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was curious. But that was the reason he was shattered, and and then mm. Lars from Metallica called him up, saying, "Hey, you know, you want to do a doco about this?" And he went, "Okay, you're fucked up. We're fucked yeah, up." Exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Okay. And on that note, <laughs> um, I think that concludes our uh, Ring franchise discussions. Once again, thank you very much for joining us, Anthony Yee. Yeah, no markers. And Ben Skinner. Goodbye. And uh, as always, your humble host, Paul Farrell. Until next time, goodbye. You're listening to the Surgeons of Horror podcast. The Ring franchise. Music supplied by Peter Nezik. For more discussions or podcasts, head over to surgeonsofhorror.com or head over to our Facebook and Twitter sites for the latest news and updates.